such as vectors, and this is very useful for you to review right now because you are using it in physics or you already used it in physics. Right? So I wish we could teach you this before you take it in physics, but unfortunately that's not the case. So Taylor read this for us. Let me point out certain things. So for example, vectors are forces, right? And vectors have a thing called magnitude. So for example, if you have a vector representing, um, um, let's say, uh, your speed, that could be the, the magnitude. Um, and then, for example, what's the difference between speed and velocity? Velocity is direction. Very good. So velocity, you could have uh, the same magnitude, but you could have opposite directions, right, of vectors. So we're going to go into that as well. Now, one important thing here is the scalar quantities, and so those are just going to be numbers, okay? Uh, we're going to do, um, do you guys remember this fourth by any chance from a previous section, maybe last semester? Scalar multiplication of something that starts with an M that you guys love. Okay, you yeah, don't love, I do. Matrices. matrices, yes. Scalar, <laughs> scalar matrix multiplication. <laughs> So that's when we would just like multiplying the whole matrix just by one tiny number, like that. Okay? So vectors, you know, they're everywhere. In fact, we all have that gravity vector that is pulling from our feet or whatever. You know, I could see you in a headstand. But that it's always pulling you down. And so all those vectors, depending on their direction and their magnitude, act against or with each other. Okay? Okay, so why do it so sad? <laughs> okay, so what is a scalar quantity or scalar? That would be um, just the same thing that is written here on the previous slide. You just copy that statement quickly. So it's going to be a quantity that is that involves magnitude but no direction. Let's write that down on the next page. It's a quantity that involves magnitude, but no direction. And in fact, what determines the direction, but we'll go more into detail in a minute, is the sign, if it's positive or negative. So let's move on, and what I want you guys to do with your partner, I want, and I'll get you a handout, okay? I'll get that one for you. I want you to analyze the four examples of vectors, read the descriptions that are below here, and then I want you to come up with something that you could write here in this space. Don't say it out loud, okay? So I'm going to pause the video, give you like one minute. That should be okay. Maybe two. Okay, so for problem to find the magnitude, we need to find, we need to use, we're going to use the distance form formula. Okay, so we have initial points, we have terminal points for each vector, and that's how we came with our, our values. Um, so this is formula, something like x sub 2 minus x sub 1 square, everything inside the radical plus y sub 2 minus y sub 1 square. And so I did the first one. We ended up getting the square root of 45. For my math lab purposes, you might want to give this answer. And so now to find the magnitude of B, are you guys done? Yes? Almost? Okay, so I'm going to start writing my answer. And I can't remember that it doesn't really matter what you choose to be x1 and x sub 2. I could say that this will be my x sub 2 and y sub 2 just for convenience because. Or actually, no, I want to call them y x sub 1 and y sub 1. Okay, and so I'm going to say um, for the x's, this is x sub 2, so 3 minus 0. And then we're going to have for y sub 2 is 6, so 6 minus y sub 1, which is 0. And then that will give me. Um, 3 squared plus 6 squared, which will be the same, 9 plus 36, which is the square root of 45. 
And so remember, we have to check two, two things, that they have the same magnitude and that also they have the same direction. So to find direction, do you guys think like just looking at the picture, do you think they're like they have the same direction? Like, can you estimate that? Yes. I heard a yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, and if you look at them, they, they look parallel. So that's another thing. What happened with lines that are parallel? What do yeah. they have in common? Same slope. Same slope. So to check if those have the same direction, we're going to find, use the slope formula. Can you just use rise over 1? Correct. So it will be like the y sub 2. Let's use some type of notation. So let's say the slope of uh, vector u. So I'm going to use a subscript for u. Like that. And sub u. And so it will be y sub 2 minus y sub 1 over x sub 2 minus x sub 1. So for mine, I'm going to have, let's see, negative 3 minus 3 over negative 3 minus 0. And remember that the y's go on top. Don't forget that because I know you haven't done slope in a while. So then we get negative 6. So they're the same sign. We combine them to the negative. And then on the bottom we have negative 3 minus 0. So it's negative 3. What do you get when you divide a negative over a negative? You get a positive. And that would be 2. And it makes sense because it's a line that is leading to the right. So it makes sense that it has a positive um, so, now you guys find the slope for the next one. So, m sub b is that? Remember, same thing, slope formula. So, we have 3, 6, okay, so I'm going to say 6 minus 0 for the difference of y and the difference of x's, I'm going to say 3 minus 0. So that's going to give me 6 over 3 equals 2. So now that we check that they have the same magnitude and the same direction, we can assume, well, we can say with certainty that u and v are equal. Pretty easy, right? Do you see? Magnitude, distance formula. Now we're going to get to a point where vectors are going to be represented in a different way. And you see this one, how it has the initial point at the origin? Yeah? We're going to get to that point right now um, in a few slides. And so with that, uh, to find the magnitude is going to become a little easier. So it's going to be the same idea. So let's write down some definitions here. So multiplying a vector by any positive real number changes its magnitude, it could be stretching it, making it longer, or shrinking it, making it smaller. It changes the magnitude, but not its direction. Now, what happens when you multiply a vector by a negative number? Oh, and also, we, can, we need to add this statement here. Uh, only if the number does not equal 1, okay? Because if we just multiply a vector by 1, you get the same, same vector, right? Now, what happens if you multiply a vector by a negative number? So, direct, yes, direction. Changes and magnitude if the number does not equal negative one. Right? Because if the number is negative 1, you're only going to change direction. But if you, is it going to change magnitude? If you want 
5 x by negative 1? No, not at all. So it's going to switch the direction. Okay, so you can see on the four examples that we have here, we have the, vet, the first vector in question, vector B. And so here we multiply by a scalar, number two, and it's like double its uh, magnitude. This one, the scalar is one half, so it's like it has uh, cut it, the magnitude of the original in half. All right? And then we see here, we have a scalar that it is bigger than one. So of course, it made the magnitude longer. Uh, but it also reversed the direction. And how do you know the direction? Because of where the arrow is pointing. OK? Now when you graph them, the initial point is here. And then the terminal point happens to be after the arrow, right after the tip of the arrow. OK, so what do we do with scalar multiplication and magnitude? So if we have a vector being multiplied by a scalar, we'll call that scalar just k. So what you will do is take the absolute value of k. Hi, Bonnie. Hi. And we also take magnitude of p. Yes, sir. Okay, so uh, Anna? Matthew? Okay, uh, and then the same thing that we wrote above is uh, uh, also written here. So if same direction, if the scalar is positive. Opposite direction, if the scalar is negative, less than zero, right? Greater than zero positive, less than zero negative. Okay. So now let's move on to here, adding two vectors. And so, um, as I told you before, we have an initial point, it says here. So we have the initial point of vector u here. And then here is the terminal point, I'm sorry, here is the terminal point of vector u. Now we have the other vector here, vector b, and here this one happens to be also the initial point. It is the terminal of u, but it's the initial of b. And here is the terminal. So this is initial terminal. And then here, this is initial, we already have it there, but it happens to be also the terminal of U. So what the instructions are telling us here for number one and two is, it says position U and V so that the terminal point of U coincides, like they're like the same, with the, or they're overlapping, with the initial point of B. So we're talking about this point right here. Okay, does that make sense? So position, the terminal point of one, so that is overlapping with the initial point of the other. Here. Okay. Now, there's a thing called the parallelogram rule. And I'll, I'll show you graphically why we call it that. So then number uh, two says the resultant vector, of the addition of them, extends from the initial point of U, so the initial point of U was here, right, to the terminal point of B, and that would be here. And so that vector, the one that um, we're going to, I'm going to color it in blue, that will be the addition of those two vectors. So let's see. What was the direction of vector U? 
just tell me positive or negative. What's the direction of vector two? So it makes sense that the direction of the addition it remains positive. Correct? Yes? So now what do we call the parallelogram? So imagine that I take this vector right here, this one here. Then if I take this one here, do you guys see the parallelogram? Yes. Yep. Yeah? So parallelogram is a quadrilateral that has the opposite sides are parallel. So this case right here, we're just mirroring vector B. That's why it's parallel. And then vector U, you're mirroring that as well, like that. Okay, and the resultant uh, addition will be the diagonal of that parallelogram. So whoever did that parallelogram will remember, okay? However, we're going to be using numbers when we have them. Now, the difference of two vectors, such as uh, V minus U, we could also remember there are only two operations, addition and multiplication. Subtraction just happens to be the addition of a negative number. So that one, we're going to rewrite it as V plus the negative, negative U. U, or the opposite of U. So let's identify them first. So my vector, the first one, vector V is here in red. And then vector U is here. However, we don't need u. We need negative u. And so that's going to be the complete opposite direction. So then it goes this way. You guys can see the parallelogram, kind of. So then the resultant vector is the one that goes from here to there. Okay? Now let's think a little bit about it. What is the direction of V? Positive or negative? What? Positive. So leading to the right. What's the direction of U? Of negative U, sorry. Negative, yes. Negative. And which one has a bigger magnitude that you think? Negative U or V? Magnitude is always positive, so it's just which one's longer? Negative U is longer. So it's like you have more negative, and uh, uh, um, the greater force is negative, pushing it into the negative side. And that's why the resultant one is going to look like that. What is the direction of V minus U? Negative. It's like a slope leaning to the left. Why does that happen? Because the magnitude of this one is greater than the magnitude of the problem. Okay, now what we're going to do. Um, we're not going to be using the initial and terminal points all the time, so we're going to do something easier. Maybe you have seen them like this in, in physics. Um, and so we're going to use the unit vector. And we have two for those. We have the uh, vector i, so can you highlight this? Vector i is a unit vector whose direction is along the positive x-axis. So that would be here. Initial point is also at the origin. Let's write it down. Zero, zero, which is the art origin. Okay, so the vector i is like a vector with a magnitude of one. Chris, what are you doing? Magnitude of one, that's why it's called a unit. One what? I don't care. One centimeter, one millimeter, doesn't matter. It's just one. And then it goes in the horizontal direction. We also refer to them as the I and J component. And then the other one, vector J, is the one that will give you the vertical component because it goes up in the um, vertical axis, or the positive y axis. So those two are your unit, so 
or vectors. Okay, now it's important to remember that the initial point is going to be at the origin, all right? So right here, for example, if I want a vector called, um, well, we'll, we'll get to that. Yes. Okay, so now let's see. We have um, initial point will be at the origin, and then the terminal point is going to be represented by the constant that will go here. By A and B. A and B are real numbers. They could be positive, they could be negative, they could be a fraction, they could be uh, irrational, that's okay. They're just real numbers. So the A will represent your uh, horizontal coordinate, for example, here like the x coordinate of the terminal point. And then the b will represent the y coordinate of the terminal point. Okay. Uh, we could also refer to them as a is the horizontal component and b is the vertical component. Okay, um, then when we find the magnitude, since we don't have initial and terminal point anymore, well, we do, but the initial happens to be 0, 0. So then we can reduce our formula. Remember, um, the first example, we had to use the x sub 2 minus x sub 1 squared plus y sub 2 minus y sub 1 squared. And so now there's no need to do that because we have it written in the ij form. And so to find the magnitude, it's enough to use the Pythagorean theorem. Okay, yeah, so let's see if we can do an example. Class is almost over, but we can do it. Okay, so let's sketch the vector and find its magnitude. It's very simple. So from here, we can assume that the initial point is at the origin. Very good. So it will be here. And then the terminal point is going to be at, would it be positive or negative 3? Negative 3. Negative 3, comma 4. So the horizontal component is negative 3. And then the vertical is positive 4, just like you're just plotting that point. And that right there is going to be the, um, the sketch of it. Now, to find the magnitude, and please don't forget the symbol that we're going to use for it. What's the name of the vector? B. So the magnitude of B equal to, now we're, what we're going to do is use this uh, Pythagorean theorem, like if you were finding the hypotenuse. But how do you know if it's, uh, if it's a right angle? Or, I mean, not a right angle. If it's right? Oh, no, wait. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm missing the square. So this will be 9 plus 16 equals the square root of 25, which is 5. Remember, magnitude is only one number. What was your question again? No, no. You got it? So yeah, it's very simple. Uh, but I don't want to scare you. But with the next things that we were doing, especially section 6.7, um, and physics will make a lot of sense after we finish 6.7. Um, that one, you need to know like a lot more formulas. You need to know how to find the magnitude. So when, once we get to that, I need you guys to be at a certain level, okay? Are you still recording? Let me pause it. Okay, guys, so pack your stuff. So, yeah, yeah, yeah.